All right, welcome back to the show. Let's uh, dive into now a very, very crucial discussion that has impacted many businesses and individuals over the past month, the CMA migration. I'm sure you've heard of it. It's been 30 days since it took place. And as with any major change, there's been a mix of experiences from customers. Now, to help us unpack what has been happening uh, over this period, I am joined by two experts from FNB, Tembi Silombo, who is the head of customer experience, and Zilin. Dealer Friedman, who is the payments head. They will be giving us insights on the developments, how the Forex platform has been enhanced, and what uh, the customer experience has been like as uh, this has unfolded. Let's get right into it. Tembi Zilindile, thank you so much for joining us on uh, the program. Perhaps the first question is just, you know, giving us an overview, really, of what has happened uh, over the past 30 days since the CMA migration. I understand it's a regional thing. Thank you for inviting us over. Um, certainly we have um, received quite, um, it's been a mixed sentiment um, from a customer perspective. Right. Um, there are customers that have quickly adapted to the change and there are those that are still continuing to adapt. Um, some, some customers have struggled initially, but mm. as they do more and more transactions, we are seeing that they are catching on and they are, pro they, they, they are now transacting smoothly. Yeah. Um, we, we have continued to enhance our customer education. We have listened in to what customers are asking to say, um, what else, how other ways um, can the bank do to make us um, understand mm. this a bit better. Um, we have shared step-by-step um, -step guides in terms of how do they make the transactions, how do they create a beneficial etc etc what are the requirements where do they found balance of payments um, codes etc etc on our platforms so that has continued um, from an FNP standpoint we've also continued to enhance our channel and simplify way customers um, find things um, one of which in terms of enhancements that have already gone live we listened when customers were saying it's a bit difficult to find um, South Africa in terms of when I'm creating a beneficiary yeah. we've then simplified that based on the transactions and made it one of the top countries that you see automatically without needing to search. But you can still um, invoke the search button where required when you are searching for any other country. Yeah. Um, we, 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 we have noted also some businesses um, offering alternative ways um, in terms of how then do you respond or make a payment in light of the complexity that right. cu customers might be experiencing. Um, they would just would like to encourage that please exercise caution because um, if a, a person is not licensed to provide a payment service, you are walking into fraud or might be exposed to fraud risk. Just exercise caution when you experience that. But where there is navigation issues that we can assist with, we've got our team where um, they can call in, um, get assisted, we walk mm. them through um, at their leisure, be it um, at home or at work, we are happy to assist. Yeah. Um, we, we also have uh, welcomed the developments from a regulatory front okay. where, where the CBE has just made things a little bit easier. What the changes that have been introduced mean from customer perspective, it says, it says if your transaction is one million and below, when you are receiving money, mm. you don't necessarily need to come to the bank or do something anymore. Um, it will only be for transactions that are one million and above for individuals. For businesses, if there's incoming funds, up to five million, they don't need to give us a BOP code because it has already been provided by the person that initiated yeah. the transaction. But a customer, if they have a view that the BOP code that was provided slightly needs to be changed based on their understanding yeah. of the funds that might be slightly different, they are still welcome to make the change. But overall, we, we, we are picking up that customers are adapting. That is also evident in the transactions that we are seeing. There hasn't been much impact. But where customers still need help, our, our, our help is still there. Interesting indeed. I want to understand, uh, first of all, I do acknowledge that this is happening within the CMA countries, the South Africa, there's Lesotho, uh, there's Namibia. And my understanding is that this is still Central African time, but I also want to acknowledge that we operate uh, using different times. Uh, I don't know, in Swaziland we start working at 8, uh, others start at 8.30. And uh, some end at 3, some end at 5, some at 4.30. What are the operating hours for this particular development since it's now integrated regionally? So, so, for, 
Oh, yeah. thank you, morning. Maybe just to take that one. So in terms of cut-off times, yes, uh, the change has been um, there when it comes to cut-off times because customers are used to transacting at any given point in time, be yeah. it during the day yeah. or during the night or on weekends. But with the CMA migration, there has been uh, an, a change in cut-off times so customers can be able to make payments uh, Monday to Friday from 8 to 3.30 p.m. as well as on weekends. Customers can cannot make payments on weekends and on holidays if the holiday is affecting the country that the money is being sent to or the country that is initiating the payment uh, is on a holiday on that particular day. So there mm -hmm. has been the change in terms of cut-off times. It's very interesting. but. I suppose another big question is, and I know you did mention uh, that uh, you know it, it's it's very important that customers, while they experience difficulties or just challenges at varying levels, uh, you girls are always there to help them understand or navigate uh, this experience. But I, I do want to understand some of the notable challenges that these customers have faced in terms of BOP codes. Uh, you've mentioned cut of times, or of course, but proof of payment delays, uh, reversals, and associated associated charges yeah could you take me through those as well okay so just maybe just to add in as well on the cut-off times is that as much as uh, there are cut-off times on mm -hmm. when payments can be processed because the 8 a.m. to the 3 30 p.m. it is uh, the processing time that mm -hmm. we can process transactions but what customers also need to be aware of is that they can still initiate payments outside of the cut-off times in their comfort of their home. Mm. Say, for example, at 8 p.m., 8 p.m., you can still do initiate your, your, your payment, but it will only be processed on the following day as a working day from the 8 a.m. So customers just need to be aware of that. So then in terms of customer um, experience that we've noted from customers, we have seen customers adjusting to the change. And also what benefited us uh, the most as well as customers is that the channels that customers are um, currently used to or they were used to before yeah. uh, are still the same platforms that they are using to transact uh, for CMA payments. So for instance, uh, customers were using online banking to make payments. Even now they are using online banking as well as the FNB app. But the only change is just the way they have been making those payments yeah. as opposed to just logging in and going to payment and then you make a payment. Now they need to go in and go into the Forex tab. So in terms of navigation, we've seen customers adjusting. But what we have noted uh, coming through is just a challenge around capturing the information because now as we are using the forex rail there are key details yeah that customers need to be cognizant of say for instance the name of the beneficiary that you're making payment to it needs to be captured correctly so we are used to nicknames you know some call me t you know some call zilindi lazy but when you make that payment, you shouldn't use uh, the name Z because yeah. it's a nickname. So you need to Indeed. capture it in full, Zilindile. You know, even if you're paying me, you need to capture it in full, Tembisi Lombo. So yeah. those are the challenges that we've seen customers experiencing. So you would find that the beneficiary name differs uh, from the account number. We've also seen customers uh, struggling with uh, capturing BOP codes. So customers wanted to memorize those BOP codes, mm -hmm. yet you don't need to memorize it. Yeah. Because when you make the payment, there is that search bar, uh, the BOP search bar. You just need to capture that particular name, depending on the purpose of the payment that you are making. And then the list of BOP codes are going to just show in the, in, as, as, as a list underneath that BOP search uh, bar. So customers don't need to memorize uh, those things. Yeah. But the main challenge has been capturing uh, details. OK, maybe let's move away from challenges a little bit and uh, talk about how customers and businesses rather benefit from this because it is being called an enhancement anyway. So, you know, wh how does FNB uh, ensures that these enhancements to the Forex platform benefit both individual customers and businesses alike? If you can share maybe specific examples. Z. I think broadly it is just a 
requirement for how cross-border transactions. So it's important for countries from okay. a balance of payments perspective to be clear that money that leaves Eswatini to go to another country, what is the reason for that? And money that is coming in, what is the reason for that? Mm -hmm. From a whole country financial standpoint, that benefit, that visibility is required for every country. Mm -hmm. So that is the basis for the migration and creating that visibility. The way that we were doing payments before did not allow for full visibility. Hence the additional requirements to say where I am where I'm sending the money or the details that are for the recipient. Where where do they live? What is the purpose that they we are we are transacting between each other? Okay. Um, who are they? So those are all the details that mm -hmm. are now required. So so we we are creating visibility in the financial sector from a countrywide perspective um, with us onboarding onto this. It's very, very important, and I see uh, why that, that, that becomes very important. I do want to understand that, because uh, you did mention that, you know, some businesses have come forward to offer some alternatives during this migration period. Mm. What precautions should customers take when considering these alternatives, as well as, you know, to just ensure they're making informed and safe decisions? So I think with every migration, um, the, the early stages are sort of like a stabilization period and customers also understanding and stabilizing on their own. Um, we, we are seeing um, entities o o offering services of sending your cash cross-border on your behalf. That is certainly not encouraged because you don't know the person. Are they registered? Are they... they are they a financial services provider? You need to, uh, you need to be certain of that part. Um, the, the, the best way to do it is to facilitate transactions for yourself. And, and that opportunity has been created by, I am not sure as a customer how to navigate. And from an FNP perspective, we are saying, come through, let us know, we'll, contact, we'll come to you, we'll call you, we'll walk you through to make it easy, just so that your money is also protected. Um, there has been, though that is usually in response to I need to send money quickly, it's a remittance. When a customer pays attention to the cut of times, they will not have an issue. The other part that customers have not quite understood, they are linking this to the ability of my card being able to work when I'm across the border. Yet your card will continue working as it was. It is not being impacted by, the, by this change. The change is just now the electronic sending of money cross-border. So, so there are a lot of myths or interpretations that we are continuously dispelling from a customer perspective, and that is one of them. And that gap in fully understanding that, no, I can still do it, make a payment with my card. I can still uh, have a uh, uh, travel and spend using my card. That is what we are just panting and con continuing to explain to customers so that they don't fall prey um, to these um, opportunities that some people are identifying. Are we able to speak now on the issue of managing reversals and associated uh, charges? <laughs> T? Uh, <coughs> yes. So as much as uh, this is new mm -hmm. uh, from a customer perspective, so with the errors that I just highlighted, you would find that uh, when you've made an error with the name uh, differing from the account number, yeah. so that payment is not going to go through but it will be returned. So there are no fees in terms of errors. So we are not charging customers right. for, <laughs> for making errors. So if you've made an error, the payment is going to come back and we are going to call um, the customer and sort of guide, you know, just yeah. give guidance yeah. to say, this is how you should have made the payment. And then we reinitiate the payment and then it goes again. So we are not charging customers for, for, return, for return of funds. Yeah. We do understand that it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a journey that we just need to work together. Yeah. I'm just wondering how specific this, uh, you know, name inputting thing is. Because my name is Sifiso, so it's S-I, and a lot of people call me Sifiso. So they omit the I after the first S. Uh, does it bounce when you write Sifiso? Because it, yesterday people would, you know, send me something with Sifiso and it would go through. Yes. So in terms of the minor errors like omitting an I, it is not an issue. So if you do see FISO without the I, it will still go through. It is when you've either made uh, the payment and captured initials 
say maybe uh, say TS uh, Lamini. Yeah, yeah. So it is not going to go through because there are so many TS Laminis. Mm -hmm. So you just need to capture the name in full. Uh -huh. And also just to be also aware of is that uh, when you're making a payment, maybe just confirm with the beneficiary the name that they used when opening their account because we also see the same with businesses. Mm. You find that a business opened an account with a certain name but when maybe they, they, yes. they start trading, they use different names as, mm. as their trade names. So just confirm uh, the details of the person that you're making a payment to before you make the payment. So just to ensure that the payment is seamless, it doesn't mm. um, get rejected or it's returned back. And also just to make customers aware of, in terms of uh, the turnaround times Time. when yeah, it comes yeah. to return of funds. So yes, you do find that it takes uh, between five to seven working days okay. for the payment to be returned. So hence it is important that before you make a payment, just call CFISO and confirm the banking details so that you capture the information correctly. Mm. I see you wanted to chime into that. Yes, I just wanted to add, Logoti, if you are asking for banking details for anyone that's cross-border, they must give you the name, the account number. Usually we'll just ask for the account number in the past because we, we know SFISO just from our own personal relationship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now we have to ask the exact name. For instance, um, Zilindile and my second name, um, you'd find that in other instances an account uses the first name yeah. or I n I'm now called a lot more by my second, second name, name versus my first name that is in my ID and the bank has used that ID. Yeah. So it's important that you just get the exact account um, name convention that has been used by the account yeah. holder, not just the account number only. How confident are you with the sharing of knowledge amongst customers or your individual customers and businesses. Uh, you did mention that, you know, how they are grasping this change or this migration is at varying stages. You know, some have, you, I think you should be satisfied now with how some have, you know, come to sort of grasp uh, this whole migration. Uh, do you advise that uh, they teach each other on the ground? Um. So, so we've worked a journey from an F&P perspective. We, we started with just sending direct emailers to customers that are saying this is the change that's happening mm -hmm. and this is how it's going to impact you. If you are a business, note these certain things. If you are an individual, note these certain things. And that was the first part. We then went on verbal communication in the various platforms that are available in the mm -hmm. country mm -hmm. just so that we, 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 we speak to the emailers that we've been sending or the, the communications that customers are sending. We've taken that a step further to say, okay, this is what it is. This is how it impacts you. Yeah. Okay, what are questions that we are seeing or are anticipating um, that you will come up with? We've broken those down. One of them is I have a child in South Africa. Mm. Um, how do I make sure I can su su sustain them, send them man 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 money monthly like I used to? Mm -hmm. And we've answered all those questions. And then we've further said, okay, Step by step, we've, we've written it down to say, this is the step, this is the step. We've made it videos now to say, now you are on the FNP app. Click here, click here, click here. We've done that for all the steps in terms of one, you creating the beneficiary, you creating, uh, making the payment, and you then making payments yeah. going forward. What we are seeing then is some of those customers might have missed that communication. When they have missed it, they do call us through our call center. We send them through, we connect them again, they have access to that. What we are now seeing further or as a response to the social media engagement that we are doing through our various platforms is now to say further questions. And what we are seeing is customers responding to each other, which is quite encouraging. It says they are understanding and they are able to then shape because they've also done it and have seen that it does work in certain areas and issues where they've had um, that they needed to get help, they got help, and then they're able to also respond on our behalf to help others, which is very encouraging. So it is there, but customers are, we, we still want them to call us. We've made it easy. We've got our toll free that is dedicated to this transition and any payments related question that they can call. We've got emails, we've got WhatsApp, they can access us in various ways. Okay. We have literally 20 seconds, 20 plus 30 seconds to answer this question. The businesses that are struggling with omitting teens, uh, how do you respond to that? 
Yes, so in terms of teams, uh, business customers just need to be aware that they need to submit uh, team numbers to us. So they do have relationship managers that mm -hmm. they can reach out to and submit their teams. So it is important that they do submit those team numbers because without a team number, a business cannot make a payment uh, within the CMA countries. They can also not receive payments. We've seen businesses receiving payments and then we need to reach out to them to request for, pin, for team numbers. So it is important that they freely uh, do share with us their team numbers. But also just to highlight in terms of the customer support mm. that we have offered, as Lindy was just mentioning, the, that customers can call in for support. So we do have a customer support center that okay. is available for customers to, to reach out and get support. We have a dedicated toll-free number just dedicated for payments. It's, it's, it's 800-1100 that okay. customers can reach us to. They can That's also awesome. use an email address, which is gethelp at fnb.co.sz. And there's also a WhatsApp number, which is 7802-9591. So we have just enabled and availed these different channels so that customers can be able to make use of either, depending on the need of the customer or which channel yeah. is more available uh, for them to use. So we are, we are here as FNB to work the journey with our customers. All right. Yeah. Thank you so much. Th this has been really, really insightful. Tembi Silombo, Head of Customer Experience, and Zilindile Friedman, Payments Head at FNB. They have shared with us uh, their expertise on the CMA migration and how it's been